So number two from uh, the 2011 hire. Functions of functions, here are three functions, not too bad looking within themselves. First of all, find g of f of x. So, g of f of x. Well, that simply means g acts on whatever f of x produces. f of x produces x cubed minus 1. So g acts in that. And what does g do? Whatever you pop into it, it'll take that and do three times it, then add 1. So if you pop this into it, it'll do three times that. And then add 1, tidy it up. 3x cubed minus 3 plus 1, 3x cubed minus 2. Well, that wasn't too bad. B. Show that g of f of x plus x times h of x gives this expression here. Well, we've already got g of f of x. There it is. 3x cubed minus 2 plus x times, now what's h of x? It's this 4x minus 5. So altogether, I've got 3x cubed. I could put them in order as I multiply them out. Plus 4x squared minus 5x. And then put the minus 2 last, just to see if I have to write that line out twice, just shuffling the terms about slightly. C. Show that x minus 1 is a factor of this expression. x minus 1. Well, if it's a factor, it would divide in with no remainder. So I'll do a division, but I'll do a synthetic division. So then pop down the coefficients, make sure there's no missing ones. 3, 2, 1, 0 for the powers of x. 3, 4, negative 5, negative 2. And if x minus 1 is meant to be a factor, then 1 would be the root. Now let's pop that through. Add it down, multiply up, add it down, multiply up, add it down, multiply up, add it down, and indeed the remainder so you make that statement. Remainder equals zero, which means x minus one is a factor. Second part, factorize it completely. Well that means that I've got this. I think I'll set it at what it was to begin with. I have three x cubed plus four x squared minus five x minus two. And x minus 1 turned out to be a factor because it divided in with no remainder. The number of times it divided in is this part. Power 0, power 1, power 2. So it's 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Factorise that yourself. A trivial little quadratic. 3x squared can only be got from 3x times x. 2 can only be got from 1 times 2. But which way around? Whatever goes here gets multiplied by 3, so the 2 must go there. Middle term's positive, the big one's positive, but that says they're both the same anyway. So there it is, the factorisation. Hence solve g of f of x plus x times h of x, that was this thing here, equal to 0. Well, that factorised to this, maybe I could put this down. That would mean that x minus 1 times 3x plus 1 times x plus 2 should equal 0. So what have you got? Put them in order though. So I've got negative 2. Or it could be negative a third. Or it could be positive 1. And that's it. That's all there was to question 2. Bet you wish you sat the exam in 2011.